Welcome, Werner Fischer. You are a developer at uh, Thomas Kern in Germany and you contributed to the how-to guide on dealing with high availability clustering with regards to the OpenVZ project. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, we came around uh, OpenVZ and doing high availability clustering two years ago. And the main idea behind is that in the past, uh, doing high availability was quite a complex thing because um, you had to take care of all the applications you have on the cluster itself. And so we were looking for a simpler way to do high availability. And there is a great benefit of using virtualization in such a setup because with virtualization behind a cluster, you can simply put all your applications you want to make highly available into a virtual environment and simply cluster the whole virtual environment. And you don't have to take care of all the applications. You simply cluster this virtual resource and you don't have to uh, think all of the problems you might have with clustering applications only. Why is it so important to build high availability clusters in virtualized environments? In fact, uh, when it comes down to virtualization, uh, you in fact get a lot of benefits, but also you have new dangers uh, behind it. In the past, when you had, for example, four servers in your setup um, and one server went down, you still had three servers up and running. And for example, it wasn't that big problem when the database server was down for a few seconds, the mail server was still up and running, the file server was still up and running. But today, in a virtualist environment, when you lose a server, you don't lose a single server, you use in fact, you lose in fact uh, 10 or 20 servers. And that's what it's so important about uh, virtualization today. You have to think of what happens when the hardware fails. And that's, that's the reason behind this. I find it interesting that you documented this for your employer, who then chose to make your how-to guide publicly available. What is the motivation behind this uncommon knowledge sharing? Uh, the reason behind is that we want to spread our knowledge. Uh, we at Thomas Quen are working for our customers and our customers want to know what they buy. So it's important for them to know how things work inside. And the good thing with open source is that you have the possibility to, to give the knowledge to the customer. And in fact, with our solution, uh, we don't have any drawbacks out of this decision because we have a very big test effort in our solution. So we test the whole implementations on a specific hardware and go to the customer and say you can use this system and they don't have to do all the testing again because we do all the testing in our lab and so there's no drawback when we document it and everybody can build it on his own because when somebody builds it on its own he also has to do all the testing and then it comes to a situation where when he wants to use it in a, in a commercial environment, he has to spend so much time and money on testing that it's cheaper to buy our box. So that's a, a great deal for both our company and both for users who want to test this technology uh, in the spare time or, or for a smaller project where they can't afford a solution to buy. So then uh, Thomas Kren also makes it money in consulting or it just lives on the hardware margins on its box solutions? In fact, the solution is running out of the box. So uh, you get the system, you plug it into your data center, uh, go configure the IP addresses and you're up and running. So big benefit is that you can use it within 15 minutes or so. And so you don't have a long time up until the system is up and running. It's, it's rather fast uh, implemented. What is your experience with the awareness and virtualization issues at your customer's site? Is high availability a major concern or did they ask different questions? In fact, uh, I think the data, the, the big question for customers is which uh, virtualization technology should I use in my data center? And that's a, a very important question. And in fact, most of the customers don't know yet what is the best solution to go today because it's a, a a very fast growing market and technologies are changing very fast. So there's a lot of time needed to, to uh, go to the customer to, to communicate with him and to get to know what's the right technology to go for the customer. That's, that's a very big question today. When customers don't know what they should use, we, we go to the customer, we uh, spend time uh, with him. But in the end, the customer has to make his decision himself, what technology to use. And 
So he needs to spend time on focusing on, on the technologies which are available to the today and make the decision afterwards. So it's, in fact, there are a lot of benefits with these, all these different kinds of virtualization solutions that are here today, but also a lot of time needed to get to know all these technologies and to make the decision afterwards. What advice do you give your customers who are selecting virtualization vendors and, and, and what existing applications are typical first candidates for virtualization? Yeah, in fact, it mainly depends on the application, uh, which is the best technology to go. In fact, if a customer does mainly uh, hosting things like web hosting, Apache web server, uh, MySQL stuff or something like this, uh, often a uh, virtualization technology, uh, technology like uh, Virtuoso OpenVSet or Linux vServer is, is the way to go because they have a single kernel running and so have a very small amount of overhead and you have very fast solutions in, in this area. On the other side, when you have different systems like Linux systems, Windows system and, and stuff like that, you have to take a, a technique which has a hypervisor like VMware or Zen where you have the possibility to virtualize both Windows and Linux system on a single box. In which cases does it make sense to recommend the hypervisor approach? In fact, the hypervisor is then necessary when, when you need to, to provide different uh, operating systems in the guests. For example, if you need to provide Windows, Linux, Solaris or other operating system on a single box, then it makes sense to, to use hypervisor-based solutions. On the other side, when you can stick with a single operating system, for example, you only need a Linux system providing web services. You don't need a hypervisor because it, of course, adds an uh, amount of, of overhead and when you simply don't rely on those uh, features, it's much easier to go with other solutions like uh, operating system level virtualization, uh, like Virtuoso or Linux vServer, and there you can put much more uh, virtual environments in a single box than you could do with hypervisors. Werner, uh, what is the main characteristic and an advantage of OpenVZ? In fact, the main characteristic is that you have a one single kernel image running on the box, but you have still uh, secure different virtual environments with its own users, its own uh, distributions, for example, um, its own file system, so you still have secured environments there, uh, but they have the great benefit that you have only a single kernel running and so you are much faster than you could be with a hypervisor. For example, when you want to boot up such a virtual environment, you don't have to initialize virtual hardware or something like that. You only uh, need to fork some processes and you will have a new system up and running within four or five seconds. And that's, that's really a great benefit also when it comes to highly available systems because when you have, for example, a, a failover, you don't need 30 seconds or 60 seconds to boot up all the virtual hardware. It takes only a few seconds and the system is up again. Who are currently driving the growth in the virtualization market? Is it a true demand from customers or, or rather vendors trying to sell their solutions and oh, still raising awareness on the benefits of virtualization? In, in fact, it's really a demand. Uh, we've seen over the last months that more and more customers are asking for virtualization technologies. In the past, our customers buy our servers um, to directly put uh, operating systems on the servers. And over the past months, we've seen more and more customers asking for virtualization technologies. And we also see them asking for VMware forks and asking for virtual. So they are aware of these different technologies. Uh, sometimes they don't know what is the technology to use, but uh, in fact we're seeing that virtualization, it's not only hype, it's really getting into the data center and more and more customers are asking for it. Thanks a lot for your time and hope to see you soon. Yeah, bye. Another exclusive interview brought to you by virtualization.com.